Before we start this video, a large thank you to Daniel Grabarczyk, Betsy Gardner, and Ray Loramoser. If my pronunciation is off on your names, I greatly apologize. Nonetheless, your support is very much appreciated. I hope you guys enjoy the video. Okay guys, let's start this off by going to our camera handler scripts. And down here, I'm just going to minimize this stuff to make the screen look less cluttered. On our handle lock on functionality, we're going to add some things here now to detect the nearest target that is to the left and right of our current target. Um, when I say nearest, I mean shortest distance on the x-axis, one way, uh, left or right. So we're going to need to add a few things to measure this. For example, we need a variable for our shortest distance uh, for left and right, and we're going to need some functionality to detect it. So let's say if input handler dot lock on flag. So if you are already locked on, uh, we're going to say vector three relative enemy position. We're going to say that equals current lock on target dot inverse transform point is what we're going to use. Uh, if you guys aren't familiar with that, I uh, suggest you take a look at the documentation. It's pretty straightforward. So we're going to use this, and then we're going to say available targets k dot transform dot position. Then right below that, we're going to say bar distance from left target equals current lock on target dot transform dot position dot x minus available targets k dot transform dot position dot x and then via distance from right target the same thing well very similar but we're going to say equals current lock on target dot transform dot position dot x plus available targets k dot transform dot position dot x and this is because on the x axis uh, if we go one direction we're actually subtracting if we go the other direction we're actually adding um, that may be a little confusing, but uh, we're actually measuring it from the distance on the uh, x-axis. So we're going to say if relative enemy position dot x is greater than zero, and distance from left target is less than shortest distance from left target, we need to make that variable. Basically, if the enemy is to the left, then we're going to say shortest distance of left target equals distance from left target and we'll say left lock on target or left lock target equals available targets dot k and we need to make these two variables now uh, dot lock on transform so it's very similar to how we handled the one above but we're also checking for uh, we're checking to see if the enemy is actually to the left or to the right of our current lock on target so up here we're going to add uh, two transforms right below nearest lock on target we're going to say public transform left lock target and public transform right lock target. Okay, now let's go back down here and we're also going to add two floats. We're going to add a float for shortest distance um, of left target and shortest distance of right target and they will both be math f dot infinity. So basically this function is just going to do something similar as the first one. It's going to measure uh, the closest um, lock on target, but only in terms of targets that are to the left and to the right of you. Uh, and it's going to measure the distance based on not how close they are to you, but how close they are on one particular axis. So down here again, we're going to do the exact same thing, but for the right target, because this is the functionality for our left target now. So we're going to say if relative enemy position dot x, this time we're going to say is less than 0 0.00, so this will be to the right of us, or the right of the enemy, sorry, uh, distance from right target is less than shortest distance from right target. Then we're going to say shortest distance of right target equals distance from right target, and then we're going to say right lock target will equal available targets k dot lock on transform. Now this is a very condensed, very straightforward way to make a lock on system that looks for a target from left to right. And I believe this is very similar uh, to how Souls handles it. It will behave exactly the way it does in Dark Souls. So let's go to our inputs and I'm going to breeze through it. It's already done it. As you can see, I made a uh, lock on target left, lock on target right. 
uh, which is just the joystick flicking to the left, and there's the settings. It's the right stick flicking left and right stick flicking right. But uh, just for the sake of this video too, I'm also going to add two keyboard bindings just to test this because I don't have a controller plugged in right now. So I'm going to add um, keyboard bindings numerals one and two on the keyboard. So I'm going to do that real quick. I'm just going to go here and click add binding. And then I will say uh, one on the keyboard. Actually, I'm going to make that two on the keyboard. I'll make left one. There we go. And up here, add binding, one on the keyboard. Cool. All right. Now I'll close that and save it. Next, we have to go to our input handler. So let's go to the player here, double click the or input handler. And uh, we're going to need to make the inputs for those buttons. So I'm um, just down here. I'm going to put them right here. Public bull. I'm going to say right stick underscore right. And then right stick underscore left. And I'm going to put underscore input just for the sake of keeping the naming conventions consistent. So I'll just go up here and edit that. Excellent. Okay. Now we need to go down to our handle, share our on enable, sorry. Um, no, it's on disable. We need to add these buttons. So we're gonna say input actions dot player actions dot, oh, I guess it's in player movement. That was a mistake of mine. Input actions dot player movement dot lock on target right plus dot performed plus equals I equals greater than right stick right input equals true and then we're going to do the same thing but for our lock on target left so again it will be under player movement dot lock on target left dot performed plus equals i equals greater than right stick left input equals true very straightforward we've done this a thousand times now so Save that and let's minimize this function. Now down to our handle lock on input. Um, we are going to add a way to, tick, to detect if we're hitting the left or right uh, stick. So first off, we don't need this here. I was just testing something last video after I was in recording. You can erase that if you have other. Um, let's see here. This looks fine. So what we're gonna do below this, below the else if, is we're just going to add two if statements. Uh, detecting if we have our lock on flag and reading if we hit the left or right stick. So we're going to say if lock on flag is true uh, and right stick left input, then what we want to do is search for our left target, our target that is left of the one we are currently locked onto. So we're going to say right stick left input is equal to false, resetting the input when we uh, after we hit it. And then we're going to say camera handler dot handle lock on and then we are going to say if camera handler dot left lock on target does not equals not does not equal null we're going to open up some curly brace here and we're going to say camera handler dot current lock on target equals camera handler dot left lock on target very straightforward and that's it for that one. And now we're going to do the exact same thing for the uh, right stick. Honestly, could have had an else if there. I'll change that after, it's not too important right now. If lock on flag and right stick, right input, we're gonna say right stick, right input is equal to false. Camera handler dot handle lock on input, or handle lock on, sorry, to search for our target. And then we're gonna say if camera handler dot right lock target does not equal null, camera handler top current lock on target is equal to that right target. Uh, again, I think this is a very clean, easy way for a lock on system. I'm very proud of it. It's uh, very simple to understand as long as you have the uh, understanding of some of the syntax you're using. So other than that, uh, that will be pretty much it, I believe, for this video. Let's, I'm going to change that to a lowercase r. I don't know why it's a capital. So let's save that. Okay, now let's jump in the game. All right, so I'm in the game here, and if I walk really close to this guy, we wanna lock onto the center guy because we're closest to him at first. So we should do that if I hit the lock on buttons, let's go. Yep, and we do, if hit one, we should go to the left. We do, and if hit two, we should go back to the center. 
We do, two again, which brings to the right, and there we go. And I can cycle back to the left as well if I want to. Perfect, awesome, that looks fantastic. If you guys made this far, give yourselves a pat on the back. On the next video, we're gonna be handling the final pieces of our lock-on system, which will consist of raising the camera a little when you're locked on. Don't know if you noticed that it does it in souls. It raises the camera above and almost points downward. Uh, we're gonna handle so you can't lock on through any kind of environments and such. We're also gonna handle so you only lock on the targets that are on your screen. And we're gonna lastly handle so our player has uh, the proper lock on animations while locked on. So he will face the person you're locked on to and kind of do a little uh, strafing style animation. And that will conclude our lock-on system. So if you guys have made it this far, please drop a like. It genuinely does help my series out so much when you guys like the video. And commenting helps out even more. And if you are feeling super generous, please check out my Patreon below. I appreciate all the support you guys continually give me. And I will see you in the next one. You guys have a lovely weekend. Alright, see ya.